Okay, guys. Uh, how you doing today? Gonna be discussing the weekly preview. This is the third time I'm doing this video, so I'm a little befuddled right now. Uh, but I'm gonna get it going again. Um, this is in the. This is for all the fights taking place on Saturday, December 12th. Um, there's three different cards going on. Nine total fights to talk about. And it's going to be uh, the first. We'll, we'll kick it off with the first one that's taking place on the zone on Saturday. Uh, should be should the whole card start in the morning and finish up in the early to mid afternoon. Um, no fight on the of these three is below the cruiserweight limit of 200 pounds. So you got some good big guys fighting um, on this card. The first one is in the heavyweight division, and it's going to feature four, two former world title challengers. The first, Huey Fury, the uh, cousin of Tyson Fury. And, you know, not a bad fighter. He's a former world title challenger. Uh, he's fought three top ten fighters currently and lost to all three. The first was to Joseph Parker when he challenged for the world title. I believe that was in 2017. And he came up short by a... Uh, majority decision, but the fight in reality really wasn't that close. They uh, Fury was fighting at home. Parker from New Zealand came into the United Kingdom to fight, and uh, he got the win, the deserving decision. Uh, Fury just got outworked. I believe in 2018 he took on Kubrat Pulev in a number one contender's bout and got cleanly outboxed. Uh, One-sided decision loss right there uh, to Pulev. And who's also fighting in the main event. And then in 2019, he took on Alexander Povetkin and lost a close, could possibly argue, a disputed decision. Um, most people didn't have a problem with Povetkin winning, but I thought Fury moved well in that fight and boxed well, and I really thought that fight could have went either way. Um, Povetkin got out of there with the win, and, you know, Povetkin's the guy that knocked out, he's a former champion that knocked out Dillian White earlier this year he's a top five heavyweight right now so um you know fury's been in there with some decent fighters and he's done okay but is he on the a level or even b level of heavyweight boxing right now um that's the big question and fury needs to continue to try to answer that and try to get himself into the mix for another world title shot because you don't know, in my opinion, you really don't know until after you fought for the title at least twice, um, you know, how good you really are. Uh, Fury's taking on former world title challenger Marius Wok. Wok um, fought Klitschko years ago, came up short. Um, you know, not a bad heavyweight. He's been in there with some good, solid heavyweights. He's been around. He's more now of that um, stepping stone type heavyweight, though. If you pass that test, you move on to other things. Um, you know, you move up a level. But um, last year, he took on Dillian White. It was on the Andy Ruiz, Anthony Joshua rematch card. Um, he bo boxed well against White. Uh, he lost a close decision, but, you know, White also took the fight on short notice and was very overweight heading into that one. So, you know, I think that's, to me, that's why Wack was more in the fight than people expected. But he fought well. And he's earned this fight with Huey Fury. Um, going to be a decent heavyweight scrap right here. I got Fury winning a decision. Um, but you never know after the way Wok fought last year. And and if Fury really, if he's on the level. So we're going to see. He's got a chance to prove himself. I got him winning a unanimous decision here. Heavyweights, guys. On the undercard, the co-feature, you're going to see Lawrence O'Coley. The undefeated WBO number two contender right now was supposed to face former two-time champion and number one contender Christoph Glowacki for the vacant world title, but Glowacki uh, tested positive for coronavirus, so that fight has been postponed. No other cruiserweight in the top 10 wanted to take the fight on short notice to fight for the vacant title, so Glowacki is going to face Nikodem Jezuski, or Jewuski, um in the co-feature instead. I got Okoli who really hasn't beaten anybody, but I got him staying busy, getting a win in this one by, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at a, a decision, possibly a late stoppage. Um, Jezuski is undefeated also, so um, we're going to see what he's made of. And then in the main event, you have 
the unified heavyweight champion of the world, my number two heavyweight in the world right now, Anthony Joshua, taking on Kubrat Pulev, former world title challenger. Joshua's rolling into this one, coming off of that win against Andy Ruiz uh, last December. It's going to be a little over a year since Joshua has fought. Um, he split the, the two fights with Ruiz, got stopped, and lost his first fight in June of last year. Came back and cleanly outboxed him over 12 rounds, one-sided shutout decision. Um, now, though, he's taking on Pulev who is a former world title challenger. Pulev hasn't fought since November of last year in a fight that I was actually at in Fresno, California when he took on Rydell Booker. He got a one-sided decision over the overmatch Booker. It's kind of a workman-like decision, nothing too impressive. Uh, and because he's been waiting around for the mandatory title shot for a couple of years now, he beat Huey Fury, as I mentioned, uh, to become the mandatory number one contender back in 2018. But because of the loss to Ruiz, and then now COVID this year, Pulev hasn't been able to cash in on that, uh, you know, yet. But Pulev's beaten some good fighters over the years. But when he's ran into the top-level guy, which is Vladimir Klitschko, he got knocked out. Um, again, Pulev is not bad. He's a pretty solid heavyweight. He's 38, though, fighting a, a good Anthony Joshua. Joshua is hungry. Joshua hasn't knocked anybody out since he knocked out Povetkin over two years ago in September of 2018. So Joshua has something to prove, especially with him wanting the Fury showdown for the undisputed title. With him possibly taking on undefeated Oleksandr Usyk um, in his next fight, he's gotta be impressive. You know, if he cannot be impressive against Pulev, who he should be, and finish Pulev and knock him out, then Joshua is showing that might have trouble with Usyk, and he's definitely putting himself as the B-side heading into the fight with Tyson Fury, like the B-side for sure. So we're going to see what Joshua does. I think Joshua is going to go blow uh, Pulev out the water. I got him knocking Pulev out within the, between the second and the fifth round, to be honest. It could go past that. Um, I think Joshua is going to open up the arsenal, though. I think he's going to box well at first, but he's going to test Pulev out. I think he's going to hurt him. And I think he knocks him out by the fourth or fifth round at the latest. Um, but if it goes past seven or eight, I'll be disappointed. I really will. Um, and if it dev if it goes to a decision, I'll be really disappointed in Joshua. And so we'll see what happens. Unified heavyweight title Saturday, the main event on the zone. I got Joshua by knockout. I got Okoli by late stoppage or decision. And I got Huey Fury by decision. Now we move on to the next card, which is on Showtime. We'll get through this one real quick. It is also a triple header. The first fight on the card, Richardson Hitchens, undefeated, up-and-comer, 11-0, five knockouts, is taking on former 130-pound champion Argenis Mendez. This fight's taking place at 140 pounds. Hitchens trying to prove that he belongs, and he is legit, while Mendez is trying to have another day in the sun, as he is a very solid and durable veteran. Um, so... Who's going to win this fight? I got Richardson, Richardson Hitchens outboxing Mendez to a clean decision victory as he'll stay undefeated. But we'll see what happens. I believe Mendez, even at his age, is still a live underdog. In the co-feature, excuse me, we have Matt Korobov, former world title challenger. He is currently my number 10 middleweight in the world right now. He's returning following a, a tough 2019 where he fought to a draw in a fight that most people felt he won against Emmanuel Aline. And then he took on Chris Eubank Jr. for the interim title in a big fight that I really thought could have went either way. Before the fight could get started in the second round, um, he threw out his shoulder and was forced to retire. It was deemed a TKO victory for Eubank. And Eubank became the interim champion. Tough break for Korobov, who just two years ago and at the end of 2018, excuse me, took the fight with Jermel Charlo on less than a week's notice and almost beat him. And there's some that will argue that he did beat him that night. That was a good close fight. He lost the decision. Korobov's a good fighter. He's 36, 37 years old. He's up there. And, um, you know, he's trying to prove that and, and get back in the mix for one more title shot. And he's definitely got talent uh, to make anybody, anybody, you know, have some trouble. So 
he's taking on veteran Ronald Ellis Jr. I don't think he should have a problem with Ronald Ellis if he still is the same crew at Pulev. I got him winning a decision, possibly a late stoppage, and staying on top of his game and pushing forward towards a uh, you know another world title shot, hopefully. And then in the main event, you have undefeated WBA interim super featherweight champion Chris Colbert as he takes on hard-hitting Jaime Arbadola from Panama. This is a pretty decent uh, fight right here um, that they're loading up for. Colbert, if you haven't seen him, he's got skill. He's undefeated. He's definitely got some skill. He's coming off a big win over uh, Jezreel Corrales, a former world champion, and he's trying to make a name for himself at 130. And, you know, between 130 and 135, he's kind of that somewhat tall, lengthy type fighter, but he's got very good skill set. And we're going to see if he can keep moving forward. I got him beating Arbadola by a decision. Should be a clean one. I'm going Colbert by decision. I'm going Korobov by decision or a late stoppage. And I'm going Richardson Hitchens by a decision victory. And that's a Showtime card. And now, finally, we're going to jump into the ESPN card that's taking place. Three good fights to talk about. First, on the undercard, Edgar Berlanga, undefeated, super middleweight right now. That's 168 pounds. He's, he is going, he is 15-0 and 0 with 15 first-round knockouts. This guy's going for number 16. He's fighting another nobody, some guy named Sierra. He should knock this guy out. I'm going first round. I don't ever call first round knockout. I think he's going to knock this dude out in the first round, finish him off, and stay undefeated um, without question. So, Berlanga, Sierra on the undercard. The second fight, the co-feature, very, it might be the best matchup of the day. It features two lightweights who are trying to get back into the mix or get in the mix for their first time. And... The name on the card on, you know, the A side in this one is Felix Verdejo, the former prospect of the year. This guy has been trying to get into that mix, but dedication, dedication and focus have really derailed this guy. He got, he got stopped a couple years ago. It hurt him, but now he is taking that step forward to try to get into serious title contention. As he to, and, and he's doing it in a great division. Lightweight, that's Teofimo Lopez, Lomachenko, uh, Gervonta Davis, Jorge Linares, Luke Campbell, Richard Comey. A lot of good fighters at lightweight. So he's doing it at the right time right here. He is taking on Masahiro Nakatani, though. Nakatani is the, is the last guy prior to Lomachenko to go 12 rounds with Teofimo Lopez in July of last year. He, he is a tall, lengthy Japanese fighter. I believe he's Japanese. And he fought Lopez hard. Now, he lost the decision. Lopez's skill set and talent much better. But he fought hard, and it was a good, solid fight. So I think this fight is 50-50. It could go either way. I like a guy like Verdejo, though, who I feel is good for boxing if his skill set pans out. I think he's good for boxing. I'm going to go with the favorite in this one, Verdejo, by a tough decision as he will continue to prove that he is a talented and has the heart to pull it out. But I really think uh, Nakatani can pull off the victory in this one just as easily, and we'll see what happens. It, uh, it It's going to be a good co-feature. And again, that might be the best matchup of the whole day between all the cards in terms of even. But in the main event, you have my number 10 super featherweight in the world right now at 130 pounds. He's a former featherweight champion, the undefeated future of boxing, Shakur Stevenson. He returns to action fighting for his second time at 130 after he moved up earlier this year in June. He takes on veteran Toka Khan Clary. Um, this, he is, he overmatches Khan Clary for sure. I think Stevenson's going to dominate Con Clary. I hope he continues to put his power on display, breaks the fighter down. I got Stevenson winning by a late stoppage in this one over the veteran. I think the veteran's going to try to press him, but Stevenson is just too good. He will figure out the body attack, break him down. I got him stopping Con Clary without question. Um, 
you know, if it goes to a decision, I'll be disappointed, but I think Stevenson can do it. I think he's hungry. He has a mandatory title fight waiting for him with Frampton and uh, Jamel Herring, the winner of that fight, and I think he wants to really impress people heading into that one. So that's the main event on ESPN. I got Stevenson by a not by a late stoppage over Con Clary. I got Verdejo by a close decision over Nakatani. And then I also have Edgar Berlanga to keep his undefeated record intact and keep his first round knockout streak rolling as he is going to beat Sierra with another first round knockout. We're going to make that 16 when he gets that first round knockout. So that's it. That's the whole card for the day. The zone, Showtime, ESPN. If you got nothing else going on, sit your ass down, watch some fights. I'm going to be working earlier in the day, um, into the afternoon, so I'll probably have to watch uh, the, the, the zone card on my phone, but I will get home and watch the ESPN and Showtime cards. And, uh, check, you know, some young fighters, some veterans, a good mix of both between all three cards. Um, you know, but the, you would definitely not be disappointed in my opinion. Um, I think if you're going to choose one card over the other, uh, the ones at night, choose ESPN over Showtime and go back and watch the Showtime fights after. Um, that's probably what I'm going to do, uh, you know, because those three fights on ESPN are just are badass. They're very good fights. But if you can catch some of the Showtime card in between, I say go do that too and definitely start your day or your early afternoon with Anthony Joshua and the Unified Heavyweight title. So that's it, guys. That's the weekly preview for boxing, Saturday, December 12th. I hope you guys enjoyed this. True boxing. You've been here with the truth.